Okay, I thought I would play around with the Space Shuttle Atlantis a little bit. Maybe record a little bit of video. And this is the launch into Sunrise scenario, which is located in the Space Shuttle Atlantis folder. And if we right-click out here, we can kind of pan around and look at it a little bit. Press F1 to jump into the into the shuttle. And if we want that 2D cockpit view, can press F8. And also by right clicking on the shuttle, we can kind of pan around and look outside. This view is kind of cool, but I think it's actually a little more easy to use this particular view. I saw a video of a guy doing some kind of a let's play type of video and he was using Orbiter and he was trying to basically launch the shuttle manually and just having some fun with it and he failed miserably and I thought it was pretty funny. The space shuttle is actually probably quite a bit more difficult to launch than the Delta Glider, but it's not that hard actually. Um, I've actually spent a little bit of time trying to refine a, a method for kind of explaining to people how to launch it, and I think I've come up with something pretty good. So, I'm going to do this in like three steps, and each one is going to get progressively better. But first things first, let's just get started with it. To launch the shuttle, all you have to do, make sure that your uh, numeric keypad is active, so you turn on numlock, and we're going to do all the controls from the numeric keypad. If you've got a small keyboard that doesn't have a numeric keypad, then I don't really know how you would do this. So I'm assuming you have a numeric keypad. The only keys that we're going to use, the only key that I would recommend that you use for your first attempt is just the number four and the number six. That's it. Don't try to control any other aspect of the shuttle on your first attempt. And there's a reason for this. If you actually, I would even say try it on your own first. Just try to launch it and see what happens. And once you crash, you'll understand my method for trying to explain it this way. So. To launch, you actually just press the plus key and hold it, and then you can press control, and that will lock the uh, engines, basically, so that they will continue firing. And then the only thing you're going to do, like I said, is press 4 and 6, and that's it. So let me show you how this works. So it takes a few seconds after you start the engines for it to actually take off. Now I'm going to press 6 to roll the shuttle around so that that uh, 80, 70, that stuff is kind of centered. And I'll show it, I'll use the mouse to highlight what I'm talking about here in a second. Once I get this straight. Okay, that's it. Very easy. Do not worry about this. That's your heading for this particular flight, just don't even worry about that. Just focus on pressing 4 and 6 in order to keep the shuttle lined up like you see here, where this stuff is straight, and you want it upside down, like I have it right now, there's a reason for that. You don't want it to where, see how the 70 and the 80 are upside down? That's how you want it as you learn more stuff, you'll, that's the position you want to be in. So I'm just tapping 4 and 6, just to keep that centered, and that's all I'm doing. Just two keystrokes. And if I want, I can uh, take a look at the outside, try to do this carefully as not to uh, make too many sudden camera movements. 
So that's always annoying when you watch people's videos and they have the camera swinging everywhere. So I'll try to make these movements carefully. So I've got the shuttle going straight up. And this is not a good orbit, by the way. But that's not the point. The point is just to get into space easily without crashing. Now, we won't stay there, because what goes up must come down. And no matter, <coughs> and pretty much no matter how far up we go, we will eventually come back down, unless we break completely free of Earth's gravitational well and so on, but that's another story. So all I did to get here, to get this far, was just four and six. That's it, four and six. I didn't try to control the pitch, I didn't try to control the yaw, just four and six, that's it. And I got the main propellant, still burning, I'm at an altitude of 135 kilometers. And again, let's take a quick peek at the external view. Oops, I missed the solid rocket boosters falling away. They're down there already, they're out of view. There's the state of Florida, getting smaller and smaller. Lake Okeechobee, I think is how that's pronounced. See the horizon. And let's get this straightened back out. Four and six, that's it. So that's not real exciting, but at least that gets you a little bit into space without crashing. And you could do that and kind of play around a little bit. And if you want to, you can accelerate time by pressing T just to uh, run this up as high as it'll go with your main engines, or as long as you still have propellant. Uh, using time acceleration, you got to be careful because things get wonky in a hurry. So I just pressed R to come back out of time acceleration. I'm going to straighten my vessel out again. Four and six, that's it. Just four and six. You see, we are getting hella high in the sky. We're at uh, almost 600 kilometers already. And we haven't done anything except rest four and six. So I'll run the clock forward a little bit more. Just till we can burn out all the fuel in the main external tank. Just to see how far up we go. Now we're almost out of fuel. Take a peek at the external view. Because the external tank will disengage as soon as we run out of fuel. And there it goes. We are at 1.2 thousand kilometers, and our peak speed was approximately, let's call it 5,300 meters a second, and we are now starting to slow down. We're still climbing, but that's what our orbital path looks like. We're going to go really far up, and then we're going to turn around, and we're going to go back down until we crash. We do have uh, maneuverability, so if you wanted to at this point, you could play around with the translation thrusters. See over here it says RCS mode is rot, that means rotation. So now that you're in space, can press uh, the different keys to have a look around. Launch is over, so you're now allowed to touch other keys. That's the external tank. It's on the same trajectory as us, so it's going to fall in place with us. Right now I'm just flipping the space shuttle over to have a look down at Earth. And I'll 
press some six to roll the space shuttle around. see the earth down there below. So that's it for this particular example. Have fun with it. You can get into space with the shuttle with nothing more than the four and the six. You won't stay there, but you can get there. You know, we and just having some fun with it, and he failed miserably, and I thought it was pretty funny. The space shuttle is actually probably quite a bit more difficult to launch than the Delta Glider, but it's not that hard, actually. Um, I've actually spent a little bit of time trying to refine a, a method for kind of explaining to people how to launch it. Cool. But I think it's actually a little more easy to use this particular view. I saw a video of a guy doing some kind of a let's play type of video and he was using Orbiter and he was trying to basically launch the shuttle man. Okay, I thought I would play around with the space shuttle Atlantis a little bit. Maybe record a little bit of video. And this is the launch into sunrise scenario which is located in the space shuttle atlantis folder and if we right click out here we can kind of pan around and look at it a little bit press f1 to jump into the into the shuttle and if we want that 2d cockpit view we can press f8 and also by right clicking on the shuttle we can kind of pan around and look outside. This view is kind of cool and I think I've come up with something pretty good. So I'm going to do this in like three steps and each one is going to get progressively better. But first things first, let's just get started with it. To launch the shuttle all you have to do Make sure that your uh, numeric 